Morning, folks. What a fucking fight. What a fucking fight. That's probably... That exceeded all my expectations. One of the best British heavyweight title fights that I can remember. Absolutely fantastic. Um, it was a draw. Um, Fabio Wardley keeps his title. But I personally had it at the end. I had Clark up 114-112. I haven't got an issue with the draw. I wouldn't have had an, an issue if Wardley had got the nod. You know, it was it was one of those fights. So back and forth. I mean, Clark, obviously on paper, he was the superior boxer with the long amateur career, the Olympic bronze medal, Commonwealth gold. And Wardley had come up through the uh, white collar boxing route. And... You know, he was the favourite going into this, and he was favoured to win by knockout. Clark, it, it, he's got deceptively fast hands for a guy his size, and he was using them to a good effect. He was using the jab well, and he was smashing those right uppercuts through, and obviously blitzed um, Wardley's nose. His nose was a fucking mess. It was definitely broken, obviously. It was affecting his breathing. He was obviously swallowing a lot of blood. Real back and forth, back and forth stuff. I mean... Clark was landing some horrendous punches on on Wardley, and Wardley was just absorbing them and taking them, you know, and despite the nose um, injury, he, he was taking some real leather in there from Clark, and he was firing back his own. I mean, yeah, they were both just landing leather. It was so, so absorbing. One of the best, as I said, one of the best British heavyweight title fights I can remember. Absolutely brilliant. Um, back and forth stuff. Uh, Clark went down in the at the end of the fifth. He took a hell of a right hand, um, sent the spray flying off his head. He, he he sort of backed into the ropes. Wardley followed up, sent him down. It was it was late in the round, and although he was hurt and obviously he was put down, you could see Clark was clear headed. You know, he was really really with it. You know, his eyes were clear. You know, his head was clear. He got up, survived the round. Um, Wardley. When he smells blood, he's like a shark. He he will go for it. Yeah, he will go for it. If he's got his man hurt, he goes for it. Absolutely fantastic. I thought the point deduction from Clark in the seventh, I believe it was the seventh, yeah, uh, for the low blow. I thought that was a bit harsh. I thought it was a bit. It was a bit of a nothing punch, really. Um, and I think the referee got a bit overexcited and took a point off. I thought that was a bit silly, just in my opinion. I thought it was unnecessary. But hey, it was what it was. But both guys, they were just smashing the shit out of each other. It was a fantastic heavyweight fight, you know. And it's a shame. It was one of those those ones you didn't want to see either guy lose, really, because they were so, you know, just just exchanging real leather. I mean, that right uppercut for Clark, that was that was his money punch in that fight. He he was landing it quite quite nicely, and. <sighs> Wardley's got a hell of a chin. I mean, he took some hellacious punches in there. And so did Clark. I know Clark went down. Um, but he took a hell, of a hell of a lot of heavy punches from Wardley. And he was absorbing them. I mean, he, was, he, he was hurt a couple of times, or at least stunned at least. And I think later in the, in the fight, there was a, a body punch from, uh, from Wardley. And Clark sort of backed off afterwards. And I, I kind of thought, oh, yeah, I think that, that bothered him a little bit. But... No, they, they, they were back and forth with it. Yeah, real, real classic heavyweight heavyweight fight. This is what you want from the heavyweights. And, yeah, I, I was just enthralled by the whole thing. Absolutely fantastic fight. And, I mean, I had I picked Wardley, um, by, probably by knockout. Um, all week I've been thinking that. But Clark, yeah, he, he showed he's got some balls. I mean, both men have got balls. And... Yeah, I'd love to see it again, man. I'd love to see it again. Like I say, I, I, although I had Clark up by two points, it was one of those fights. It, yeah, if a couple of rounds had gone either way here and there, it could have been a draw. I could have had it a draw. I could have had it to Wardley, you know. So I'm not 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 bothered by the draw. It's fair enough. Uh, but yeah, um, they were both absolutely knackered by the fit by the, by the end of the eighth, and it, understandably so. I mean, they both put so much into it, so much into this. And obviously, uh, before this fight, uh, Wardley had never been past seven. Uh, Clark had been ten before with uh, Marius Vac, but uh, yeah, they were both just non-stop. They were just going for it, and then you, you know, by the end of it, I mean, Clark was absolutely shattered. And uh, you know, when the final bell rang to end the fight, 
yeah, he sagged down and sat on the bottom rope. He he was done. And if this had been back in the old days when there were 15 rounds, I think Wardley would have stopped him. But obviously we don't live in those times. We live in 12, the 12 round era. Brilliant fight. Brilliant, brilliant fight. It's got to happen again. It really it has got to happen again. And I hope it does. Because, yeah, it needs to happen again. What a fucking brilliant fight. I can't say enough about it. If you didn't see it, go and watch it. it absolutely fantastic fight. Um... Yeah, that that knows though. I mean that that I was a bit concerned that that might actually get the fight stopped because the doctor had a look at it at one point, and I was a bit worried that he'd stop it. Don't get me wrong. Fair enough. If he did, I'm glad he didn't, because that that wouldn't have been a good way for this fight to end. You know, it had to end either end on a decision or a, a clear knockout. But yeah, it went the full distance. Absolutely brilliant. Would, we need to see it again. Fucking fantastic. Anybody who bought a ticket to see that last night, you got your money's worth. And I've been very critical of Ben Shalom and his cards. Uh, they're usually not that fucking good a lot of the time. But this one, this card was brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah, that that's a, a classic heavyweight title fight. And probably one of the best British heavyweight title fights I can remember. You know, I mean, Mark Potter and uh, Danny Williams back 20 odd, 24 years ago. Yeah, that that was a classic one. There's been some good heavyweight title fights over the years, but this this was absolutely brilliant. Can't praise it enough. Like I say, I'll say it again. You, if you didn't see it, go back and watch it. Absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Fantastic. The both guys showed that they are even. They are they they're, they're brilliant. You know, they're, they're proper warriors. These guys, absolute fucking warriors, and I loved every second of it. Brilliant fight. Uh, the only other fight I really want to talk about was the co-main, uh, the, the sort of uh, main sort of support fight that was uh, Florian Marku and Chris Congo. A bit of a letdown this fight for me. Uh, I enjoyed it. Don't get me wrong. Chris Congo got the uh, decision. I had it 98-91 to Congo. Uh, Marku, he's very very one-dimensional. He always has been. Um, he's he's entertaining. He's very aggressive and very entertaining to watch. But I've always kind of thought he's been a bit one-dimensional. And if he got in there with a, a box, a slick boxer, he was going to get exposed. And to me, that's what happened last night. Uh, he had his odd little moments here and there. But, you know, it was a bit of a scrappy, messy one. I mean, Congo, he was holding a hell of a lot. I don't like to see that. Not as bad as Lawrence Ocoli holding, but he was holding a lot. Um, and that gets a bit annoying after a while. Every time uh, Marku got close, he was just grabbing hold of him. But he, he was working where he was using his, his, his superior reach and his boxing um, to keep Marku. Yeah, he was just outlanding Marku. Marku, you know, he kept dropping his hands and smiling and shaking his head and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, OK, you're a tough guy and you can take a punch, but that's not going to win you the fight. You know, and he was trying. You know, he, he, had, he had a couple of moments here and there. But yeah, it wasn't the most exciting fight. I enjoyed it, but it wasn't the greatest fight I've ever seen. Um, but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. It was it wasn't it is what it is. Um, I don't know where Marku goes from here, really, because you know he's very one dimensional, very exciting to watch when when he's in with the right opponent. Styles makes fights, as they say. But but yeah, but no, Ben Shalom actually put on a bloody good fight. I mean, I got a friend in Canada, and he always refers to uh, Ben Shalom as Ben the Hack. Because he says he doesn't know what he's doing and he he's just a hack, you know. That's his opinion. I would be inclined to agree with it. Sometimes I don't think uh, he, I don't think he's the best promoter. He's nowhere near the best promoter, and he's a bit charismaless as well. I mean, that's obviously just his personality, but he's very, yeah. He's not. I don't. Know, he's not that. He does. It, uh, he he puts me to sleep sometimes when he's been interviewed to Shalom. But no, can't criticise this card. Absolutely fucking brilliant. And there was another thing that got there. They've announced uh, the plans for Adam Azim to fight Harlem Eubank. And they had uh, Barry McGuigan and uh, Chris Eubank Sr. in the ring. And I, I just found it a bit bizarre. Because Barry McGuigan just looked very uncomfortable. Like he, you know, he didn't really want to be there. To me, That's just what I saw. And Chris Eubank, I don't know, he was just waffling and not really saying anything. And... You know, with his little scarf on and his little sheriff's badge. I don't know what that's all about. Um, yeah, it was a bit bizarre. And I was a bit disappointed because obviously we want... Um, 
you know, I don't know. It's not a bad fight. You know, I'll watch it and I'm intrigued by it, but it's not the fight we all want for Adam Azim. So, yeah, that was a little bit odd. Um, I found that a little bit just bizarre, really. Um, I mean, Chris Eubank's always been eccentric, as we know. He's always been a bit strange and says strange things and his mannerisms are strange and he's, he's definitely a showman and a performer and very eccentric, as I say. But, yeah, I just find that whole segment a little bit... A little bit strange, a little bit bizarre, but there you go. So no, thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you did too. Um, I've, I've just noticed this morning that I've got 91 subscribers to this channel. Do you know what? That that is fantastic. Obviously, it's not the millions that other other content creators, influencers, whatever you want to call these people, that they get. So it's, it's a teardrop in the ocean. But just the fact that 91 people out there are interested in what I got to say. I mean, that really touches me. Because I do this just for me. Boxing's my passion. Boxing's my life. And the fact that 91 people are actually interested in what i got to say, whether you agree with me or not, you know, I, I think it's fantastic. And it means a lot. I do this. I started doing this nearly two years ago, just purely for myself. I was in a bit of a dark place with depression. And boxing has always been there for me. It's always, It's always the thing in my life that, makes me happy so yeah the fact that other people want to listen to me and, and interact with me in the comments I mean there's so many of you at times that you know you leave comments whether you agree with me or not I mean it's not a problem you know that's what we're all about we're all entitled to our own opinions but the fact that people are interested in what I've got to say and I'm, I'm interested in what they think what you guys think as well so no so thank you very much it means a hell of a lot and yeah I'm going to continue to bore you all shitless with my boxing opinions so hope you all had a good uh, long weekend in the uk uh, take care folks and i'll speak to you soon